You've got to talk it up. Talk it up. You've got to talk it up. Talk it up. We're talking about real issues, real life. Applying the word while enduring the fight. You've got to talk it up. Welcome to Talk It Up, the gospel show that's empowering families with the communication skills to share and speak on sensitive matters from pregnancies to relationships, even abstinence, raising the level of awareness. Now here's your host, Minister Michelle Bailey. Beating the odds takes courage, determination, and faith. Today we will hear from Johnny and Friends radio broadcast as she shares with us how she beat the odds against a reckless diving experience. Also joining us today is Judy Redlick and how she's keeping Johnny's vision alive. And as always, our special guest, Grace Mercy. What is Grace saying today? Charity doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Grace has moved from a high-rise, luxurious office to a tiny space, and there's no key to the file cabinet. Grace receives permission from her boss to have her old file cabinet with the key moved to her tiny space. But does Grace realize that the new employee is wondering, where's the key? What will Grace do? Keep her old file cabinet? Return the old file cabinet, make the new employee get a new key. What do you think Grace would do? We'll find out a little later. Johnny Erickson Tata shares with us her reckless diving experience and how it led her to hope and faith to encourage others. Whether you're in a wheelchair or stressing over school homework, we're all in need of hope. Here's Johnny Erickson Tata. You might recognize my voice. Hi, this is Johnny Erickson Tata, and welcome to Johnny and Friends. You might recognize my story. It was many years ago that I broke my neck in a diving accident, but I began to see that my life was not over. In many ways, it was just beginning. I've been towing it on radio stations nationwide for over 30 years. I don't do this alone. Radio is a team effort. Check, check, check. Meet Tatiana, communications coordinator, and Rainy, communications manager. We're prayed up and charging in the head. And while some things have changed, the message hasn't. Hey, this is Johnny Erickson Tata, and I want you to meet our new intern here at Johnny and Friends. Kevin, welcome to the microphone. Thank you so much. And tell us quick how it is that you landed in this wheelchair. Approximately nine days after my 14th birthday, there was a knock at my door. Uh, it was my neighbor from across the street um, came in and uh, had a nine millimeter handgun. And the next thing I knew, I was just laying in my kitchen, uh, couldn't move. Tell us the difference Christ has made in your life. Well, you know, Christ is just really, uh, you know, he's been that foundation for me. You know, epiphany that I had um, really came in the form of, of forgiveness. Um, and I mean... Forgiveness for the man who the, shot you. Forgiveness for the man who shot me. And I realized, you know, if, if I weren't to forgive this man, um, I would be saying that I don't trust God. Wow. Thanks, Kevin, for coming. We have joining us today Judy Reddick from the greater St. Louis area, from Johnny and Friends of the International Disability Center. How are you today, Judy? Just fine, Michelle. Thank you for having me on. Now, you are actually an um, employee of Johnny and Friends, correct? Right. Tell us a little bit um, about how you came to work for Johnny and Friends? Well, I've, I'm a native of St. Louisan, okay. and uh, 
I was born into a family with two sisters who thought I was their bratty little sister. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a grocery store manager and my mom a registered nurse at the Lutheran Hospital, when it was Lutheran Hospital. And um, so when, when I was born, I was born two much, months premature and they put me in an incubator. In fact, I was born at the same time my cousin Tom was born. He was born two days after I was born. And uh, he, he and his mom went home. He was able to enjoy life with his two big brothers. And I was in the hospital for two months because I was so small. And um, because of the oxygen content in the incubator, my retinas were detached. So when I finally went home from the hospital, mom and dad were challenged with, what are they gonna do with this daughter who is blind? And so my mom and dad took on the challenge and they decided that they were gonna teach me how to be an overcomer. And so that's exactly how my life was built on challenge and being an overcomer. So I was the first blind child to go through the Lutheran parochial school system and uh, first disabled child to go through the Lutheran parochial school system and Lutheran High School South and Green Park Lutheran School. And then I went to Missouri Valley College. And then I went out to, I got a degree in broadcasting and psychology. And then I went out to be a folk singer for about nine months to the chagrin of my parents. But that was in the days, the, the 70s, you know, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Joni Mitchell, Joan Baez, uh, Carol King. And so I did that for about nine months. And then in 2007, I felt like God was calling me to do something different. And I wanted to start working with churches. And I wanted to help churches realize that people with disabilities needed a place to belong. So I started praying about this whole thing. And then I saw there was an opening at Johnny and Friends for a, the manager. And so I applied for that job and I got that position. And so since January 2008, I am the, with the manager and then became, got promoted in 2013 to the area director of Johnny and Friends Greater St. Louis. And so that's kind of how I got that job with Johnny and Friends, asked God to, to use my talents and my abilities, and uh, that's what he did. So I changed careers in midstream, and here I am today talking to you about Johnny and Friends. Now that's one of the things that Johnny is known for is helping those who have disabilities. Right. That's what she has a heart for. And, and, and here you are reaching out to others who have disabilities as well. You know, I think it's really awesome how, how Johnny herself reached out past her own disability to help other people. And I believe she's living the life. One of the things I, I, I read or did a little research on, Johnny says, you're never alone. You can make a difference. And Trudy right. Johnny has made a difference in That's many right. people's lives. Maybe your viewers would like to know a little bit about Johnny's story. Go ahead and share that with us, will you? Okay. Well, Johnny, when she was 17, mm -hmm. she was in a diving accident. And before that, she was quite athletic. She loved her farm. She lived on, their, on the farm with her family. And she rode horses. And she, she, was, she was pretty athletic and involved in just about everything. And then she had this diving accident and she was paralyzed from the neck down. Now, just think how you would feel if that would happen for you. Well, Johnny was in the hospital. She had a choice. Was she gonna reach out and live or was she gonna vegetate and just watch TV and vegetate in the air conditioning and suffer through the agony and the pain of being paralyzed? Well, she chose to reach out and go above and beyond. And so she started to pray and ask God what he wanted her to do in her life. And then pretty soon the, they started Johnny and Friends and they started the, the ministry and she started a radio program and people wrote letters to her and her friends would help her answer them at the kitchen table because she, just, she couldn't write, but she could tell them what to say. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the ministry of Johnny and Friends started. Now you guys have several things that go on nationally as well as locally. Can you share with some of the things that are going on nationally with Johnny and Friends? Well, we have various programs. In fact, let me talk about some of them. We have 
the uh, Wheels for the World program. I have a team in Mexico, two teams as we speak, that are in Mexico doing a week-long short-term missionary trip in Mexico. You see, each of our offices has adopted one of the countries. And in fact, Johnny and Friends has given out walkers, wheelchairs, canes and crutches in 23 different countries. And what we do is these are called Wheels for the World Outreaches and we take physical therapists or occupational therapists and they help fit people into the wheelchairs. And then we take people who are support people and people who are mechanics. You know, the people that can use the screwdrivers and the hammers and make those <laughs> things all fall into place. The physical therapist gives them the instructions. And right now we have 500 Mexico volunteers working with our two teams. We have nine on one team and 10 on the other. And they're all doing short-term missionary trips to help people affected by disability become more mobile. And of course, the real reason, Michelle, that we do that is because we want to share the gospel. And we're so excited when we are told great stories of how people turn their life over to Christ just because of the love that's been shown to them by people who reach out mm -hmm. and care. So that's one of the programs. That's our Wheels for the World program. I can't talk m too much about Wheels for the World. How long did you guys so stay? Exciting. How long is, does the team stay in Mexico when it goes? Uh, we go for a, a week. For so a week. they left yesterday, and they'll be back um, in about seven days. So that takes a lot of preparation, mm -hmm. I bet. Oh, yeah, a lot of preparation. And what we're going to do in August is we're a couple of us are going back, and we're going to train pastors just like we do in Missouri and the other offices do in their areas, how to start disability ministries in their church. So often uh, people serve, but they don't help the person with a disability or their family serve as well. So they don't become really involved with them. They kind of, you know, help them to have their needs met, but they don't really make friends with them to make them feel really a part. Mm -hmm. So that's what the whole Through the Roof story is all about. It's about these four people making friends, bringing their friend who they love, putting him in front of Jesus, doing the thing about the roof, putting the hole in the roof, and uh, to, to lower him down because they loved their friend so much. And Jesus healed him. Well, that's the way the church should be with people who have disabilities, not feeling sorry for them, right. but helping them find a place where they can feel a part of a congregation. So that, you know, like in the, the regular church, what do you do? You, you want people to come to your church right. and you um, want them to come and draw close to Christ. So we through the Through the Roof program, mm -hmm. teach churches how to do that. We teach them, you know, a lot of times it's just the attitude that people have. Talk, to, talk to me a little bit right there, um, Judy, about the attitude. What do you tell the church about the attitude that is um, needed toward a disabled person? Well, I think the whole thing is helping people see that people who have disabilities are just like themselves. Do you know everybody has a disability to some degree? You might have, somebody might have stage fright. Well, that's a disability if you are having to speak in front of a large group of people. Uh, people might have, everybody has something because we are living in a fallen world and everybody has challenges. But uh, sometimes people with disabilities look like they have a disability and they, they so they, therefore they, uh, they're treated a little bit different. People in wheelchairs, people look down at them. And so are you, them. Saying, are, you, are you saying, Judy, that people with disabilities, that they are ignored? Yeah, are treated differently. Mm -hmm. Like when you see a person with a disability, and this is one of the things we talk to churches about. When we have training meetings, we have quarterly training meetings, mm -hmm. and we have we'll go to church, local churches and just talk to the people and do you know speak at their congregation, give them some ideas, uh, give them some examples. But we do have regular training meetings where churches can come and uh, their their children's directors or their ministry directors can come and be trained and how to work with people with disabilities. But the whole, the whole attitude um, 
when you pray for someone. When, when you pray for someone who have, has a disability, don't just say, oh, Jesus, heal their legs and da-da-da-da. What do you teach the church to do? Well, what we do is, I mean, normally, naturally, if you have a prayer request, ask the person. What is see. the prayer request? Huh? Yeah, what is your prayer <laughs> request? Don't zero in on the thing that you think they might want prayer for. You see, because maybe they don't want prayer for that. Maybe they want prayer for something else, and you've just missed the boat. Because so many people, I, I'm included. I mean, sometimes we go to local church and we feel like a spectacle because people want to put their hands on us and pray for us. Oh, you know how many times I've had somebody come up to me and go, oh, let me pray for your eyes. Well, shoot, you can pray for my eyes, but you can pray for the rest of me too. I'm, you know, but... But, uh, but that draws, drives people away. That really drives people who have disabilities in their families away when they're treated like a spectacle. And that's why only one in 10 go to a local church on a regular basis. So if you're looking for a way to help your church grow, the best way is to incorporate people with disabilities into their families into your congregation. So you guys have a way where people can find a local dis uh, church that has disability uh -huh. ministry. How we can do. they do that? In fact, if people have a disability and would like to find a local church where your family would be accepted, you can just call our office at 314-773-5664. And that's 314-773-5664. Or you can go to the Johnny and Friends website at johnnyandfriends.org and go to the local offices and choose St. Louis. That sounds wonderful, Judy. Now, is there anything they can do if there's not a local ministry? Can they start one themselves? Or guess... Oh, we would love churches to start local ministries, and that's why we have our training sessions. In fact, um, we just finished a training session where we had a, a young man who's talking about muscular dystrophy. He saw, he's had that all of his life. Mm -hmm. And what is it? And, and then he gives practical tips. Well, how can you help a person most who has muscular dystrophy when they're going through the challenges? Uh, we also are, we've also done uh, training on autism, uh, what it's like to be deaf, you know, and all that, and blindness and, um, we have basic training, so if a person, if a church starts and they've never been to our training before, we do have a track at every training that is basic training where they get a book on how to start a disability ministry at their church. And of course, we come along and we can visit your church and help you look at and talk about what is the area of disability ministry you might want to start with. And we also have a vacation Bible school kit that is for kids without disabilities to learn about kids who have disabilities. Oh, that's awesome, Judy. That is awesome. So Johnny and Friends is teaching uh, various people throughout the country how to reach past that disability and basically look inward at the person instead of at the outward physical. That's right. That's right. And we have offices all over the nation. Our headquarters is in Agora Hills, California, beautiful country out there. And then we have offices in various parts. Uh, we have one in um, Arizona, we have one in Missouri, we have one in uh, the East, East Coast, a couple of them in the East Coast. We have some in California, we have one in Ohio. So if people have relatives who live in various places, yeah, throughout the nation, they can call our Johnny and Friends office in Agora Hills, and they'll tell them where there's an office in their area or near them, or they can look at our website. And that's johnnyandfriends.org, and that's J-O-N-I. The ministry also has interns that volunteer. We have the Cause for Life program. Yes. And that program is 
where people are taught in disability ministry, and they might be people that have just gotten out of college, they might have a summer that they might like to spend while they're in college or just after high school, uh, where they want to learn and get immersed in disability ministry. Mm. And so they might work at one of our offices as an intern, they might go on a short-term mission trip, they might work in the Agora Hills office at our home office, but their whole focus of the internship is to immerse the intern into Johnny and Friends ministry in disability ministry. So wherever they go, they've been impacted and they can uh, have more of an idea and maybe start working in the field of disability uh, as a result of what they've learned through their Cause for Life internship. Well, you know, Judy, we have a short video and let's listen to what the interns have to say about Calls for Life. I want to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. I want to help those who can't help themselves. I want to love the unloved. I want to bring hope to the hopeless. I want to encourage people with disabilities to lead independent, purposeful lives. Cause for Life helps to equip people in tangible ways for ministry work within their church and community. You get to learn alongside other interns who share the same passion to serve those affected by disability and the same faith in Jesus Christ. Learn how to raise up disability leaders within your church. Discover what the Bible says about disability ministry. Advocate for those with disabilities. Understand the reality of the lives of those with disabilities and how we can bring love into their lives. The Bible tells us to care for the poor and people with disabilities and bring them into the church. We can try all day to fix all the world's problems, but if they don't know Jesus, then they don't have salvation, and that's our main goal here. If you're looking to gain a bigger perspective of God's heart, the Ministry and Missions Internship with Cause for Life is a great place to start. You get to literally be the hands and feet of Christ as you just walk through their struggles and their joy with them. You have a purpose in this life. Even if you feel like you might not be able to do much, you leave an impact on people around the world. Well, they had a lot to say. The one thing I picked up on that video is they said that they become the hands and feet of the people that they help. And I think that's really important that we do become the hands and feet of those that need assistance, those that need um, further help with their disabilities. And the interns are doing a great, great job in reaching out to help people in all areas. They also assist something with family retreats. Is that part of the Cause for Life? Uh, not of the, not cause for life specifically, but it is one of the things that they do okay. as interns. And there, it's one of the things that volunteers throughout the nation do. Family retreats are another program that Johnny and Friends does. We do not have them in Missouri as of yet, but family retreats are where families who have a loved one with a disability can go and spend a whole four or five days together enjoying God's creation at a campsite. And they might go horseback riding, they might go, um, what is that thing when you go repelling? They might uh, go in a boat and they might go swimming, but they have all these contraptions. So if they're wheelchair bound, that they can use those contraptions to do some of the same things that people that are not wheelchair bound can do. And then of course they have Bible study and uh, they have separate tracks for the family and they have people who volunteer and what they do is they are the, um, the mentor or the assistant to the person who has a disability. So the family gets a vacation and the person with a disability makes a new friend who helps them also have a great vacation. Share with us one more time, Judy, of how a person who may be interested in growing a disability ministry in their church, how they may contact you. Well, we'd love to hear from you because we have training meetings all the time. We're starting a new network in St. Charles. We have one in Southwest Missouri. We have one in St. Louis, Missouri, and we have quarterly training meetings. You can call 314-773-5664. That's our office, 314 773 5664.
And if you're aware of someone that has a disability, Judy has just given you information on how to reach her ministry. We look forward, and she looks forward to hearing from you. Judy, we want to thank you for joining Talking Up today and continue to be a help in the ministry. Thank you so very much. And thank you, Michelle, for letting us be a part and share our story. You're welcome, Judy. So what did Grace do? Keep her old file cabinet, return her old file cabinet with the key, make the new employee get a new key. Grace returned her old file cabinet with the key. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse five says, charity doth not behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked and thinketh no evil. Our attitude affects our behaviors. Our attitude affects the choices that we make each and every day. Our attitude determines whether or not we will have a course of success or failure. Have you ever woke up, was in the greatest mood, you put on your straw hat, your yellow sunglasses, and you let your sunroof down on the car, and you head it through the drive-thru. Your conversation sounded something like this. Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, that would be fantastic. Isn't it a beautiful day? Have a great day. See you later. On the other hand, when we hear the old cliche that says, you're wearing your feelings on your sleeves, the conversation sounds something like this. Oh, really? No, not right now. And we are wearing our feelings on our sleeves. But because Christ took the time to give us a heart of flesh and to remove the heart of stone, we have become new creatures in him. When we begin to look at chapter 13, in 1 Corinthians, it speaks of, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. Are you a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal? Do some days you feel like this? Like everything is just moving in the wrong direction. But yet Christ says that when he loved us, he gave us his love. The word of God says that we are not easily provoked. That he created in us a clean heart and he removed the heart of stone. When grace is present in our lives, it humbles us. And it causes Christ to rise up that others may see him. So grace shall allow God to rise up in her to overcome the situation or the circumstance that she was confronted with that day. Don't be a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. We well, thank you for joining us today on Talk It Up. And as always... Grace and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining us.